The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my lie down and he Leads me beside still waters. Restores my life. We meet the right past for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they come to me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You will anoint my head with oil, my cup full of thorns. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in my house of joy for all my life. Amen. Father, you have heard our concerns, and our heart goes out to all those that are suffering in our community and throughout our nation and throughout the world. We, we ask that you help enlighten us and others to help each other as uh, Galatians encourages us. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let's join in the Lord's Prayer. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> themselves the apostles 
to the apostles, teaching to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had something, had everything in common. Selling their possessions and their goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And toying with me in a moment. By faith in the promise of the resurrected Christ, to guide us by the Holy Spirit, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You do not need to be to agree with everything that uh, I say. I'm not ordained or an authority, but so whether you do or not, I urge you to examine scriptures and reach your own conclusions. Sometimes both the best and the worst sermons I've ever heard inspired intense study in the following week and the rule of faith. As always, I admonish myself and address this congregation without condemnation, but I seek to encourage the efforts you and I already exercised to follow Jesus' teachings. Our faith asks us to improve our own behavior. We're not to criticize or restrict the conduct of others, but to forgive. Perhaps our words will also touch others to join us, or at least understand why we meet together and understand the faith we pursue. The world around us hounds us with a different message of individual pursuit of wealth, security, possessions, social position, and at least self-made success. But Jesus blessed us with a different message of love and concern for others. Our first reading from everyone's favorite song expresses the benefits and assurances we should enjoy if we actually follow Jesus. Another familiar parable Jesus told found in John 10 tells how the sheep follow their master's voice. Those sheep are not led to still waters and green passage, pastures unless they follow that voice. Our New Testament scripture for today from Acts 2, from Luke's second chapter in the book of Acts, gives us a glowing example of the conduct of the apostles and the early Christian church. The apostles had just witnessed the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, and then the anointing by the Holy Spirit displayed by untutored apostles speaking in languages understood by foreign visitors to Jerusalem. This would be like me now speaking in Chinese or Ukrainian. Wish me good luck. By the same spirit, the apostle Peter addressed the gathered crowds, recounting the resurrection and crucifixion. That day, this unschooled fisherman is reported to have converted and baptized about 3,000 men and women to become followers of Christ. Beyond accepting baptism, how did these new converts respond? Quoting the infant. Acts 2, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and the breaking of bread and to prayer. Some translations note that the breaking of bread means more than just eating together, but includes ceremonial celebration of the Last Supper. We plan to share a meal today, and next week we should observe Jesus' last meal with his disciples before his death and crucifixion. Every day, they, all the believers, continued to meet together in the temple courts, not just on the Sabbath or, Sabbath or Sunday, to celebrate the resurrection. They were eager to learn all they could. We now have the luxury of re reading the printed word and hearing the recorded Bible daily through many media. The New Testament 
is the record of the witness of the apostles and their followers during the first years of the Christian church. It is among the best, but not the only way, to inform ourselves of the will of God in our own lives. We should be devoted to study of Jesus' teachings through the apostles' recollection and listen to his voice. We today have the opportunity to pray repeatedly each day as the Spirit moves us. While my daughter was still alive, she would often be distressed by the tragedy and conflict in the news media, as are we all. That's what sells and draws an audience. Often my reply to her and to you today is that the news provides opportunities for prayer. Take those opportunities and include the needs of others you know that do not make the news, and then include your own needs. Then there's the radical stuff. Quoting Acts 2, all the believers were together and had everything in common. Wow, they really shared with each other. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. This is an awesome act of obedience to Jesus' teaching as they understood it and in anticipation, and in anticipation of the imminent second coming of Christ. If Christ came again soon to rule the world through the law of love, or if Jesus quickly took them away to heaven, they would have no need for material possessions. It would be easy to misunderstand that they all surrendered all their possessions. That's not what this passage says. The story of Ananias and Sapphira, found in Acts chapter 5, encourages an understanding that surrendering all worldly goods was a required part of the practice of the newfound church, as you would recall, both of them at their death after, uh, after uh, deceiving the apostles. However, this couple's minds is clearly also about deception and lying, saying that they were giving all the proceeds from the sale of their land to the church when they were actually holding back a portion for themselves. Luke's gospel account in chapter 18 of Jesus' teaching includes Jesus' reply to a rich ruler asking what he must do to inherit eternal life. He said, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Other passages also support the idea that wealth and possessions can stand in the way of following Jesus. Matthew in chapter 19 notes Jesus teaching, it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. We should understand that the eye of the needle was an actual entrance into Jerusalem. A loaded camel could not squeeze through. When unloaded of possessions, a spare camel or donkey could pass in and out. We are not if we are not experiencing the kind of assurance expressed in our earlier reading of Psalm 23, it's time to ask ourselves if our conception, possession, and earthly concerns are weighing us down and expanding our birth. As Americans, many of us live with enormous wealth and expanding waste in the middle of an impoverished neighbor's close and far abroad. What are we doing to provide for the future needs of our planet and its inhabitants? What are we doing to share our wealth? As I said in the beginning, I did not come here this morning to criticize or condemn, but to encourage us all to continue to strive in our walk of faith. If we have fallen short, as surely we must be human, we are at let us retain the hope and continue the march and celebrate that we are under the law of love and forgiveness through the sacrifice of Christ Jesus. <laughs>